Look at this. Apparently, bad guys are not allowed to use iPhones on camera in movies. The director of Knives Out revealing Apple's micromanaging ways in a recent interview with Vanity Fair. Joining me now is John Rich. He's a country music star and host of Fox Nation show The Pursuit with John Rich. Great to have you here, John. I love it that you're going to join us um, on the daily briefing. So, did you, I don't I don't go to the movies a lot, but I didn't even realize Apple is so conscious about their brand. They don't want any bad guys using iPhones. So this could actually be a spoiler for all everybody out there watching a movie. If you see a bad guy and he doesn't have an iPhone, then maybe he's yeah, not the bad it, guy. It, it does. It kind of gives away the story, you know. I was thinking about this. You know, I wish Apple would be so concerned with actual bad guys that have their phones. You remember there was some bad guys uh, that, that we actually caught and they wouldn't hack their phone to find yes, out. Yes, and that's in real life. On, <laughs> right, right, what was on their phone. I got this hillbilly buddy of mine that lives down in Arkansas that said, man, I, I guess Apple probably didn't hack those phones due to privacy, but you know that every morning when you wake up, you want to make sure you put your clothes on before you turn your phone on because you know they're looking at you, right? <laughs> that's what everybody thinks. That, but Mac, it could be. Um, we did reach out to Apple. Um, to see if this is true and um, we, we did not hear back which you might not be surprised to hear the other thing I was gonna run by you is um, the International Journal of Psychology did this study about the kind of cars that um, people drive There's focusing on men so fellas who drive cars um, that are fancy like they say a luxury brand is Audi or BMW that they tend to be self-centered stubborn argumentative <laughs> Um, they're nasty in their personality traits, especially among men, and that they won't stop for pedestrians, et cetera. Like, that can't be true, right? I mean, I think if you're a jerk, you're, you're a, jerk, a jerk, no matter what car you're driving. You know, I, I go back and look at Burt Reynolds, who drove, I would call that a luxury car, the Smoking a Bandit car, which I have one of those. And Burt was pretty cool. Sally Field had no problem with Burt Reynolds. He seemed like one of the nicest guys around. But I think the car doesn't make you a jerk. I think maybe if you are a jerk and you have a really nice car, it probably just makes people like you that much less. So, I know you grew up in, um, in, in the South, in Texas, and um, I, I know that, like, for you, you've been underestimated um, your whole life, right? Like, like, this idea of labeling people and putting them in boxes because of where they might be from or the kind of car they might drive, it's something that you've always rejected. Well, it is, and honestly, one thing I can't stand to hear politicians say is refer to Americans as upper class, middle class, or lower class. How about upper income, middle income, lower income. You know, I know a lot of low class rich people and I know a lot of high class uh, poor people. So I've never believed in labeling people. And the great thing about America, it doesn't matter where you start off. If you want to work really hard, pursue happiness, mm -hmm. you never know where you might end up. And you might end up right there in Nashville where you are. Um, yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you one other thing because at the top of the show, Dr. Sira Madad from New York City, she's in charge of making sure that pandemics don't break out here in our hospitals in New York City. She said that in order to make sure you're washing your hands an appropriate amount of time, to prevent getting colds, flu, or even the coronavirus, you should wash your hands for 20 seconds, and she tells her kids that means you sing the happy birthday song twice through, <laughs> which I think that's a lot, like happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, that's a lot. And <laughs> you're in the music business, you count a lot. You, the the right. timing of these songs is important. What 20 seconds would you suggest we sing? Uh, well, first of all, shout out to Granny Rich, who's right now at, at her job at 88 years old. She just had a birthday. Granny, wash your hands. Try this one on, Dana. Uh, what, let's time it. Well, I saddle up my horse and I ride into the city. I make a lot of noise because the girls, they are so pretty. Riding up and down Broadway on my old studly row and the girls say, save a horse, ride a cowboy, rinse them off. I think you're good, America. I think it's Just do a like little save horse, seconds. ride a cowboy. I think it was really good. <laughs> I knew you Stay could do healthy, it. Stay healthy, America. But now I'm going to have that song in my head the rest of the day. Tell me a little bit about the Fox <laughs> Nation show that you have that everybody should check out. Well, I'm really excited about it. It's called The Pursuit with John Rich. It's based on the fact that our country guarantees us uh, the pursuit of happiness, not the right to be happy. There's a big difference in those two things. So I sit people down, Americans from all different backgrounds, some of the most interesting people you've ever seen. We sit, sit them down at my house here in Nashville, and I do deep dive interviews with them to hear their story of chasing the American dream. It, it's, it's very incredible, some of the things I've you learned. You talked to Winona Judd. Um, I imagine that's one as a country music fan that I'd love to, love to watch. Winona is awesome. And you know, Winona even told me, she's been interviewed a million times. She said to tell her story in the frame of the pursuit of happiness really gave her even a deeper mm -hmm. moment on um, some well, of her Well, and answers. I know her mama Let's watches the show, so hello to Naomi Judd also out there. Yes, Thank you, we John Rich. We too. appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, everybody. I'm Dana Perino. See you on The Five. Here's Bill Hammer.
I like uh, I'm on his job, Dana. <laughs> that guy's always in a good mood, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, I'm, try I'm trying to do everything I can, you know, like a little singing, a little dancing <laughs> at we'll, the end of the we show. we got some work to do. See you at 5 o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Let's get rolling.